Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Jonathan, and welcome back to Money Talks, where we want to offer you financial information and meet you where you are financially so that you're able to stick to your budget, manage to pay off your debt, and begin to save on your path to building wealth. Today, guys, I want to talk to you about where are you in your wealth building chapter. If this is your first time joining me here on the channel, go ahead and get go ahead and hit that subscribe button and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Guys, when you think about where you want to go financially, it's always important to know where you're at. Which stage of wealth building are you in? Some people may be beginning, some people may be kind of in that middle and seeing that progress, and some people have already built some wealth and they're just adding on to the end. So if you're in the beginning, what does that entail? You're, you're in the beginning, so you're saying, hey, I'm writing my budget. I'm starting to understand how much money I make in a month. I'm starting to understand where <clears throat> my money is going every month. What am I spending my money on? And starting to really learn the habit of saving and understand that saving, just like some, like anything else, no matter what, is something you will do for the long term. So saving is vital to your wealth building, no matter where it goes. Second thing you want to think about in the beginning is do you have an emergency fund? Do you have cash set aside on hand so that should something come up with your house, should something come up with your car, should something come up with your kids, if you lose your job, you can take care of yourself for six, three to six months of expenses. And then what is that comfortable number for you? Sometimes when you haven't had money or had 10000 or 12000 in the bank, you would think at first you ramp it up. And it takes you some maturity financially to understand that after that money sitting for a while, hey, I don't actually need that much money on hand. And time will tell you that. But it's okay when you're saving that if you think, hey, once I get to 10000 I'm single, I'm fine. That's great. But if you're a family of four, or if you have a wife or something of that nature, and you have a few bills, car loans, credit cards, all those different things, really you need to be in that twenty twenty five thousand dollars uh, mark. And if you're on what's about the average income of the, of the United States, 60000 then you definitely probably need to be around 20000 in your emergency fund. That should cover you. But... If you're in the beginning, all of this stuff will be new information, budgeting and investing, stocks, bonds, real estate, capital gains, all these different things will be new to you. And it can be so cumbersome about getting the data right. What I want you to do in this stage is really focus on getting the basic skills down. That means understanding your income know how much you make know how much it takes for you to live on each month regardless hey how much do i have to pay in bills every month Can, is there a way to decrease that amount and as you you get more skilled in this level and learn a little bit more best practices that you can apply to your situation you'll drive that number down but you have to know how much you make net income you have to know how much you spend going out every month. Those are benchmarks. The second piece is consider making yourself just not just have that monthly pain. You do need to do that every month before the month begins, but really start to look at two to three years. What are expenses that I'm going to have to take and what are expenses that I'm going to have to have that are pretty large that I need to prepare for? Do you have a car that's kind of run down that you need to probably replace soon? Are you having a kid soon? Do you need to start stockpiling cash so that you're, you're able to pay for those hospital deductibles um, and make adjustments for your budget for that new arrival? Do you, uh, are you about to lose your job in this pandemic? What can you do to kind of pause what you're doing and stockpile as much cash to start weathering the storm through your next job search. All these different things are, again, I know it's new information, but this is where you really start to take control. The foundation. Also, 
know what you owe not just in the month but then pull your credit report and from TransUnion, Equifax, Experion and Equifax you're allowed one free credit report every year so it's important that you pull the three so that you understand what each one is reporting so that again in this beginning start stage you fully understand what your particular financial situation looks like next as you start to grow and kind of be in that middle well you probably made some progress you paid paid off your debt you built up an emergency fund now you're beginning to invest now you start to really think about okay if i'm going to invest what and which way am i going to invest that is going to be most most profitable for me or it's going to connect with me the most meaning i'm going to stick with it so you started working on the savings money i'm sorry savings muscle in that first stage but in this middle stage you want to think about okay i know i need to invest in my 401k make try to get that Roth 401k going 20 25 percent that's what i want to aim for but do you have other aspirations maybe you're buying a home maybe this first home isn't going to be your forever home but am i buying a home or am i buying something that hey i'm gonna live in but i may rent it over the next two three years if you're not buying a home in the next three or i'm sorry if you don't plan to be at the home in the next three years it's probably not best that you buy but could you buy a rental could you buy something that could go up in value you charge some rent you get depreciation and you get tax benefits from that sure you could but it's important that you understand what is going to connect with you maybe your aspirations is a business even if your aspiration is in the business you still need to take that businesses create cash flow that's the good thing about them real estate create cash flow they go up in value but the money is not always liquid the majority of the money in your profit meaning the value of the home is not liquid and able for you to just go in and withdraw and then stocks it's not you own a stock but it doesn't have the same ownership feeling as a business or a um, or real estate so when you think about the ways you can invest those are your three areas and each one of them have their strengths and they have their opportunities but the best thing i would say is you need a mixture of all three obviously having a business that's great for your cash flow that's great for um to decrease taxes is great a lot of ways it's not great for sustainable investment long term meaning that money needs to grow that's why you have stocks and real estate so if you're going to be looking at business really think about okay if i'm going to be in business the profits i make for the business i need to invest in stocks or real estate whichever one you desire again these are your choices but these are the ways we build wealth here in the united states so it's important that you're if you're trying to build wealth you know hey what's going to be suitable for me with real estate you're not going to have readily access cash so if you really have to think about if i'm going to have real estate i need to have probably stocks as well so that i have cash that's readily available that's above and beyond what i might get in rent because you're not gonna be able to just go in and withdraw ten twenty thousand dollars off the value of a home you can do it by borrowing but that's not the same so we don't want that to happen these are the ways you need to figure out what's going to be your tool and it's not about figuring out as much as make the decision if you're going to be in real estate be in real estate but again build your plan this is the wealth building part of your plan and it's going to look choppy as you begin it's going to take five six seven years of you being consistently focused on growing your wealth in this manner before it your actions start to have real tangible results that you are proud of and give you confidence to go the next 10 12 years so i would encourage you at bare minimum real estate stocks most people have real estate stocks if you're an entrepreneur 
the only thing I would encourage you about being an entrepreneur, businesses offer great opportunities for you to have cash flow. But make sure on the back end, you're investing in something that's better for you vehicle wise long term. And that would be real estate or stocks. Hopefully that wasn't too much information and you didn't get inundated, but it's really important that basically you understand takeaway wise, real estate, stocks, and business. Three ways to invest. It's good to have one. It's better to have all three. So a little bit of each, um, but we're always going to have our strengths to where we lean more to one. And then lastly, what stage are you? Are you already nearing or at financial independence? It's at this stage where your work truly, meaning the work you're doing, you can walk away at any time. What are you going to do with your wealth? Now that you built this, this incredible amount of money and you have the option to leave, are you happy with your job? Are you, what are you going to do next? What is the purpose of this stage is to create the opportunity for you to truly decide how you want to get up and spend your day. Maybe you like your job. Maybe you like your career. That's great. Keep doing it. Do it differently. But if you want it, the best thing about being financially independent is you can own your schedule and you can own your time. And we all know time can be fleeting. So what does that mean you go spend two, three, four months abroad? Could be. Does that mean you just get a part-time job that you really have a passion for the business, but it's not something you're there to pay your light bill or anything of that nature? What ways can you use the wealth that you built to not only impact your life, but out lives around you? It's at this stage that, yes, your wealth will keep going. Maybe you want to unmask more wealth. But along this journey, once you get that financial independence, meaning financial independence is simply that your assets, you've built up enough assets, stocks, real estate, or your business, where it can take care of your bills without you working. But true wealth, it will outpace what you earn personally. So it, both of them are wealth. It's just what stage of wealth do you want to be at and what stage is worth it. So once you get to this stage or as you're nearing that stage, it's really important that you start to really think and sit and ponder, what am I going to do next? Am I actually happy with the work that I'm doing? Do I want to continue doing that or do I want to do it in a different capacity? Well, taking money out of the reasons why you're doing something is one of the best ways to naturally do what you want to do. And ultimately, throughout all these these pieces of journey, all these different stages, the key thing is you have to sit there and make a decision. You have to decide, hey, I want to invest in stock. I like investing in stock. I connect with it. I understand it. That's my route. That's where I'm going. I like real estate. I love the home buying purchases. I love um, being able to touch my investment. That's the route I'm going. Love business. I love being able to serve clients and customers in this capacity. That's the route I'm going. And that's all fine. But when you're talking about strategically trying to build wealth, you t go do what you want and go do what you like, but also add the pieces that help you have a more sustainable wealth track. Because one thing's for sure, you want your wealth to last more generations than you. That's the whole purpose of building wealth. It is to enhance your life. No one builds wealth so they can't enjoy the money, but it's really the sense of purpose that that wealth gives you, that goal that it gives you as you start to try to create a lasting legacy and change the things that are in your family. I hope this video is helpful for you guys. If you like it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.